Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fusco. I'm a professional photographer and Sigma ambassador. I'm gonna be sharing everything you need to know to take photos of the night sky right from home. So normally with astrophotography, we do our best to get as far away from light pollution as possible. This makes taking photos of things like the Milky Way or meteor showers a lot easier. But to help everyone while we're sheltering in place and doing our best to social distance, I wanna show you how you can take photos of the stars right from where you live. Um, so we're gonna be choosing star trails, and if you're unfamiliar with them, it's basically a few hundred photos taken consecutively and then stacked on top of each other. Um, as the Earth rotates, each photo captures just a small bit of movement, and by stacking them on top of each other, we can create some really exciting images. Because the lines and the trails take up more of the frame, it's kind of the perfect go-to for shooting in light polluted areas. So to get started, let's talk about the gear that we're gonna need. It's a bit less restrictive than our normal gear requirements for astrophotography, so regardless of what you have, um, you should be able to get started right away at home. You're going to need a camera body, whether it's mirrorless or DSLR, and as long as we can set all of our settings manually, we should be good to go. Um, for our lens, you know, for traditional astro, we're using a wide-angle lens with a really fast aperture, um, f2.8 or something like one of the Sigma Primes with f1.4. Um, but when we're shooting star trails, and especially under light pollution, we can get away with a slower lens and a tighter focal length. Um, so if you have something that only shoots at f4, or the widest frame you have is um, like a 35 or a 50, we can definitely use those too. So we want to make sure that we have a sturdy tripod. Um, since we'll be shooting for at least 45 minutes or longer, we want to make sure our camera is as stable as possible. So that's definitely an important one. Um, you're going to need a remote shutter release, or if your camera has a built-in intervalometer, or you can have an external intervalometer as well. We'll be taking all of our photos back to back, so that's also really important to have. Um, and whether you're new to Astro or not, there's some great apps you can use for learning and to see what's in the night sky. My personal favorites are um, PhotoPills and Starwalk. There are, are no shortage of apps you can try out. Um, and if you're using a headlamp, something with a red light will help you keep your night vision intact. Um, and last but certainly not least, we have to make sure that our batteries are fully charged and you have plenty of room on your memory card. So now that we've covered gear, let's take a quick overview of settings. These are gonna vary based on a number of different scenarios, but we'll cover kind of where to get started and then you can experiment to see what works best for the gear that you're using and the location that you're shooting. Our camera is gonna be set to M, so we're manual, so we can set all of our settings independently. Um, our exposure time is gonna be between 10 and 30 seconds. Now normally our goal is to find the longest amount of time we can expose for without the stars bringing the trail. But since we're shooting star trails, we can kind of experiment a little bit more. It's not quite as important, but I'll normally try to keep my own stars relatively sharp. And that way, in case you catch a really bright meteor or something exciting in your image, you can take that single frame in addition to all your star trails and still have a really great photo. Our aperture, um, unless you have a really dark sky or you live in an ultra dark area, you're probably gonna end up shooting somewhere around F4. Um, if you are under really dark skies, you'd be shooting around 2.8 or one of those have one of the prime lenses where we'd be shooting at 1.4 but since most of us are going to be dealing with a little bit of light pollution we can stop our lenses down a little bit now for our iso each camera is going to perform a little bit differently when using higher iso um, so for this i suggest starting somewhere between 800 and 1600 with some test images and see how that looks our, our focus is going to be set to um, manual on your lens and we're going to be aiming for an infinity focus now depending on your focal length anything really close to your camera might be out of focus but that should keep all of our stars really sharp um, you can use the live view to find a really bright star or a planet and look for the infinity symbol on your lens it might be um, an l also or you might not have one at all but using the live view and a bright planet or a star um, you kind of watch it go from a something that looks a little bit like bokeh and it'll get smaller, smaller, and smaller. And then at some point it starts to get a little bit bigger. It normally means you've just passed that focus point. But definitely take a couple of test images and then take the time to review really closely to make sure that stars, um, both at the edge and the center of your frame are in focus. Um, we're gonna wanna make sure that our camera is in any continuous shooting mode, um, whether that is continuous low or continuous high. It might vary camera to camera. This will allow us, when using that remote, to take photos as soon as our camera finishes taking the photo before it. We wanna make sure that our long exposure noise reduction is off. It'll vary a little bit by um, camera, what that's called, but basically um, that would take a dark frame or a second exposure, exact same length of the exposure that you just took to try and reduce noise. But since we're shooting star trails, that would actually leave a little bit of a gap in between this. So we wanna make sure that's turned off. If your lens has any sort of image or optical stabilization, we want to make sure that's turned off as well. Since we're shooting on a tripod, that might give us uh, you know, an out-of-focus image. 
And also, when it comes to our, our file format, we want to make sure that we're shooting in RAW. And this way, this will allow us the most amount of room to edit our photos and you know, adjust a white balance that I personally start with daylight and then kind of adjust a little bit later on when I'm editing my photos. So from there, we need to find a composition and determine which direction we're going to face in the sky. Now, depending on what type of view you have of the stars or which direction your view faces, the star trails you shoot will create different patterns. Um, shooting to the north will give you that circular pattern in the stars, while shooting to the east or west will kind of have the star trails shoot across your frame. And shooting south will have the stars kind of shoot up from the horizon, arch over a little bit, and then kind of aim back down. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a northern facing view of the stars, so I'm going to aim my camera at Polaris. That'll give me that circular pattern in the stars that creates a really cool look. So I'm going to grab my camera and we're going to get started. So if you're not sure which direction your composition faces, you can use one of those apps I mentioned earlier and hold your phone up to the sky and see what exactly is going to be in your photo. So I'm going to look for Polaris to create the circular trail or circular pattern in my star trails. I have kind of these two nice trees that are pretty tall that I'm going to aim my camera between um, and try to have the star trail start in the middle and then circle out beyond those two, uh, two different trees. And for my trails, I'm going to be shooting with the Sigma FP camera body and the Sigma 14-24 f2.8 art lens. It's kind of a classic focal range for astrophotography. Um, the 2.8 aperture is ideal and you know the, um, the edge sharpness on this lens is really, really awesome. So it's one of my go-to lenses for astrophotography. So I have that northern facing uh, composition that I'm going to set up. My settings, I'm going to try to start around f4. Um, I think my exposure time will probably be between 10 and 15 seconds. And I'm going to keep my ISO around 1600. I know that'll keep a really clean image. And basically what I'm looking for is I, you know, I want to make sure that I have a little bit of detail in my foreground objects and that all my stars are really sharp, but the sky isn't too bright. So I'm going to take a couple test shots. And then this has a built-in intervalometer, so I'm going to set the interval to one second longer than the exposure time that I land on. Um, and then I'm going to have it take kind of an infinite number of exposures. Basically, it, just, it will just keep shooting until I tell it to stop. Um, this way, if something happens towards the beginning of the frame, um, or in one of the beginning frames, I can just have it keep going a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to aim for between an hour to two hours of photos. And then we'll bring all those into Lightroom and go through the processing to create the star trails. All right, so I have all of my star trail images imported into my Lightroom catalog. And what we do here is we pick out one of our photos to edit, and then we want to apply that same edit to all of the images. So I've already gone ahead and take a look at one of my single frames. Um, you know, I ended up shooting at ISO 1600, right around 18 millimeters f4, and I landed at 10 seconds. Uh, I kept a, the sky is looking pretty dark at Polaris right here in the middle between these two trees. Uh, I've already applied a couple quick edits to this one, just kind of get us started, and then go back over into our library and there's a number of ways you can apply your uh, your edits to all the photos you can either do control shift and c and select all and then actually highlight all the photos you want um, and hit control shift and v if you're in windows um, if you're in the develop module and you have all these selected too you can also just hit sync and we'll give you the same options but results are pretty much the same either way. So that's the important part of what we're doing in Lightroom. Basically, we import our photos to kind of organize them and then apply edits to one and sync that across all of our photos. Because from here, we have to export the photos from Lightroom into a program called StarStacks. And we have to edit in Lightroom and export into either JPEGs or TIFFs because StarStacks doesn't work with any sort of raw file. And what StarStacks does is actually we'll take every photo that we shot in our sequence and stack them on top of each other to create the trails. So we're gonna jump ahead here as Lightroom finishes pasting these settings and we'll get into the export. All right, so Lightroom has applied all those edits we've made. So again, with all the photos selected, go up to File and hit Export. 
And up here we have a couple different options if you haven't used this export tool. Um, you can always, wherever you organize your photos in, I'm gonna save it to desktop and I'll put it in a subfolder called Star Trails. And then we can scroll down through, you can, you can rename them, but it doesn't really matter because we're not too worried about the individual files at this point. Um, here we have our important settings under file settings. Now we can do JPEG or TIFF will work for star stacks. I'm gonna do JPEG for now because it's a little bit quicker. I will increase the quality up to about 90. We wanna make sure that we're not resizing any of our images because we want the, the full resolution image there. Uh, and again, these don't matter too much because we're gonna take all these photos and create one more. So we're gonna click export and let Lightroom do its thing. It's got about 430 photos to export. So once that's finished up, we'll jump over to star stacks and start building our star trails. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up star stacks and the Lightroom has finished exporting all of my photos. And it's a pretty simple program. All it does is build star trail photos and we're gonna go ahead and open up my folder of images and just highlight all of them and drag them right over into star stacks. We can make that a little bit larger. And now don't worry over here, um, very often the files will be out of order, but as long as they're all there, they should stack okay. So what you wanna do if it's the first time using star stacks is come over to clicking on this icon that'll give us preferences. If you're not sure, you can just highlight over any of these icons and it'll tell you what they're for. Um, there's a couple of different options. By default, it's a might and um, again, you can, you can highlight over to, to see what's there. For normal star trails, I either go with lighten or gap filling. Gap filling will, even if you only had that one second interval in your photos, it'll still a little bit of hesitation between or between images that your camera takes. And this China does its best job at filling that in. Uh, comment mode is just kind of a stylized um, look, you've probably seen that online before if you've looked at a lot of Star Trek images. But since we've taken you know, over 400 photos, I'm going to keep it in the normal gap filling mode. Um, I don't have any dark frames, so it doesn't matter if that's set up. Um, images, it's not too much you have to worry about here. Everything can kind of stay as defaults, and general doesn't really have too much we have to worry about. So now we can go ahead and click Start Processing here. And it'll work through stacking all the images. Again, because the file names are a little bit off, uh, there might be um, you know, some gaps in the way it's built. But in the end, we're going to have some pretty solid star trails. And then we can take this and, if it's necessary, apply some additional edits. But we might have a, a pretty good image to go right from here. Again, this takes a few minutes, regardless of what type of computer you're using. Um, so. If it's your first time, it's kind of fun to watch um, the trails be built. If not, you can walk away, grab a cup of coffee or something to drink, and then come back and, and see what your image looks like. Since it'll take a few minutes here, I will join you as soon as it's finished up. So there we go. We've got some really cool looking star trails shot under some pretty light polluted skies. And the cool thing about the way we did this is it doesn't have to be just under light polluted skies. You can take the same exact technique uh, once we don't have to worry about social distancing and sheltering in place and shoot star trails under some really dark skies in all sorts of different conditions. So I hope you head out into your backyard for now and later on to find some really dark skies. If you do, be sure to tag Sigma, um, tag myself so we can check them out. I'd really love to see them. If you have any questions, um, definitely shoot a message online I, I can't wait to see what, uh, what everyone comes up with. So thanks so much for hanging out. Um, I'm going to make some coffee and eventually get some sleep. Have a great day, everyone.